UK and India have held their 12th round of the economic and financial dialogue. What does this mean for the two sides and the relationship going forward? With us right now is uh, UK's Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt. Jeremy Hunt, thank you so much for joining us. Let me begin by asking you about the dialogue that you had with Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman, uh, the infrastructure financing bridge that has been launched, the significance and the aim of that. Well, uh, India has a big priority on infrastructure, as does the UK, because we're both doing the climate transition to net zero economies. That means a big, big investment in our infrastructure. And the UK has the largest uh, financial centre, the most international financial centre, actually the second largest in the world. So big pools of capital that uh, UK-based investors would love to invest in India. Uh, this is a great strength for the British economy and uh, we want to unlock that capital. So the, uh, the infrastructure bridge is a way of seeing if we can get more international funding for Indian capital projects using the great strengths of the UK as a financial centre. Uh, are you working with certain capital targets in mind per year? No, um, but I think we are very clear that we want to see real money flow into Indian infrastructure and we'd like to see that happen soon. And what that means is removing the practical barriers so that international investors who may be based in London but they're very mobile and they can invest in any corner of the globe uh, know that they have got the protections they need if they invest in India. And uh, we're very confident we can remove those barriers. Right. Uh, you also said India is ready to explore direct listing of Indian companies on the London Stock Exchange. What level are the discussions on currently? Well, this is, again, an example of where the world's fifth largest economy and the world's sixth largest economy uh, are able to capitalize on each other's strengths. And why does this matter? Well, um, India is uh, Asia's Silicon Valley and the UK is Europe's Silicon Valley. We both have big technology hubs. Technology businesses need to raise money and uh, we want the London Stock Exchange to become Europe's NASDAQ or even better than Europe's NASDAQ. And we want to give that opportunity to Indian companies as well to benefit from being able to raise capital internationally. So um, it's a very good area where we can both work together. Uh, any timeline on concluding uh, talks on that? Well, we've had lots of discussions about timelines and I, I always think it jinxes discussions if you start giving a public deadline. But uh, what, I, what I can say is that uh, there was an urgency and a determination to conclude these discussions successfully that I haven't seen before and I think in both countries that comes right from the top. Right. Uh, discussions on the FTA and bilateral investment treaty. Uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said that these are going on in a parallel manner. On the bilateral investment treaty, what has the, what's the progress that's been made during this visit? Well, I think we've made good progress um, because uh, we have a common goal um, both for the UK economy and for the Indian economy we want to unlock capital flows into our fastest growing companies. And um, in London, which is a huge financial centre, we have, for example, £2.6 trillion of pension and insurance industry capital pools. And at the moment, the vast majority of those pools are deployed in gilts and bonds, when many of the people operating them would like to invest them in high growth stocks with higher returns. So, what we're really discussing uh, now is a way to unlock that opportunity for India. I think it's a big opportunity. I'd like to ask you about the FTA talks. Uh, this was also done during the visit of the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Uh, both sides decided to give some amount of momentum to those talks. Where are we with the negotiations and how soon do you think uh, we could conclude them? And at this stage, what are UK's priorities when uh, those FTA talks are concerned? Well, what we want is uh, to have the most open possible deal with the fewest restrictions on trade. We're, we're a free trade country. We believe in free trade. And as the sixth largest economy in the world, this is a big market to open to Indian exporters. Um, and I think you will find less reluctance to remove those barriers than you would with the other big trading blocks in the world. So there's a really exciting deal to be done. Um, 
but it's new territory for India, it's new territory for the UK. Um, I think we're closer to a deal than we've ever been. Uh, that doesn't mean it's guaranteed we'll get a deal. Um, Rishi Sunak has been very clear, we'll only sign a deal when it's the right deal for the UK. Um, but I think there is a, a sense of momentum from the Prime Ministers of both countries that I haven't seen before. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we will be successful. And no timelines for this one either? Well, I think, as I say, if you give a timeline, uh, you can jinx these things. So it better not to have the public timeline. But, you know, I think uh, there's a better chance of doing a deal both on uh, bilateral investment and on trade mm. than I've seen for a long time. Uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, the return of economic offenders. Was this also discussed when you met uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman uh, this afternoon? And uh, is India also linking this or making it a condition in FTA, in the FTA? The return of, of economic offenders, economic fugitives. Uh, well, I think all these are details, and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to uh, go into details. Um, and what happens when you have these talks is that people say, uh, you know, this is what we want, and this is what we really want, and this is what we really don't want. And it's only when you start to have discussions in those very frank ways that you make progress, and that is the progress we're making. All right. Uh, coming back to the economic and finance, uh, financial dialogue, there were also discussions on cooperation in the gift city, uh, insurance and pension funds as well. Could you give us details on that? Yes, I mean, Gift City is a very exciting initiative, and uh, we want to support India in developing Gift City as a major financial center. And of course, that's something with the City of London that we have enormous experience of. So uh, we had a lot of discussions about that project. We're very excited about it. We think it's a great thing for India to do. Um, and then when it comes to pensions and insurance funds, well, um, as I mentioned, we have several trillion pounds of those funds. We are embarking on a major reform in the UK to change the regulations to make it easier for them to invest in high growth stocks. Mm. Um, and as we do that, we hope India will be one of the countries that benefits. Uh, I'd also now like, to, uh, like you to reflect on the G20 Delhi Declaration. It really went down till the last day. The drafts were changed several times. There were 15 drafts, lots of negotiations. Uh, how do you think all countries, including the UK, especially the UK, came around to supporting the document? There were very strong uh, sentiments that the UK had on the Russia war against Ukraine. How do you think consensus came about? Well, I think it was a triumph for Indian diplomacy. I think India, as the hosts, handled a very difficult international situation extremely well mm -hmm. and perhaps they're the only country mm -hmm. that was able, would be able to marshal everyone together to do a communique mm -hmm. um, and from the UK's point of view uh, you're right uh, we don't want to tear up an international order that has kept more or less kept peace in the world mm -hmm. since the Second World War certainly avoided a world war um, and we were very pleased to see that respecting territorial integrity was part of that communique. My final question, uh, Chancellor Hunt, uh, you will soon deliver an autumn statement. What are some of the challenges in the UK economy, the global economy, that you will try and address your key economic priorities right now? Two things. Uh, the short term, we will continue to bear down on inflation as is happening in the United States, in the Eurozone, and in India, um, because we recognize it's a temporary phenomenon, but it is very important to remove it from the economy. But then, in the autumn statement, I'll be going beyond that, and I'll be saying, here is a country where the economy has been much more resilient than really anyone predicted. Uh, we've had the fastest recovery from COVID of any major European country. We've had our growth upgraded by the Bank of England, the International Monetary Fund, uh, by the official statistician only last week. And when it comes to the industries of the future, uh, the industries where India has big interest, whether it's developing new medicines, whether it's technology, whether it's clean energy, whether it's entertainment, these are areas where the UK is the European leader. Uh, we want to be a scientific superpower, the world's next Silicon Valley, and we want to work with fantastic countries like India and do it together. 
Chancellor Hunt, thank you so much for speaking to CNBC TV18 on the economic and financial dialogue and what lies ahead for India-UK going forward. Thanks once again for being with us. Thank you.